I'm the coordinator of an EU-funded program called Plaprova, which is a collaboration with uh, Russia, and we're particularly interested in developing veterinary vaccines, including vaccines against porcine respiratory and reproductive syndrome virus, um, blue tongue virus, um, foot and mouth disease virus, and also possible uh, vaccines against influenza viruses which propagate in animals, um, which of course act as a reservoir for human diseases in certain cases. So the idea of using those obviously is to increase animal health, but also the regulatory regime is rather different for veterinary products compared with uh, medical products. And so it will be a very good proof of concept of the uh, viability of producing vaccines in plants. Well, potentially, um, they could be cheaper, and that's a very big issue for veterinary vaccines, because obviously the cost of a vaccine has to be balanced against the cost of replacing livestock, um, which is not quite the issue in a human context, obviously. Um, and so um, they potentially could be cheaper, they potentially could be administered orally, which could be a huge advantage, say, for animals in a field or in more remote districts. If you could make something which could be just simply eaten, um, that, would make, that would be a huge advantage. And that kind of thing is essential, really, for things like poultry. The idea of vaccinating each animal could be quite tricky. So the, the, the hope is that you'll be able to, to use them in, in that way as well. Well, actually, in terms of making them, that seems, in most cases, fairly straightforward. What is going to be the bigger issue are the regulatory concerns. Um, and uh, those can be quite time-consuming. And um, the trouble is, plant-produced material, in terms of protein-based vaccines, is quite new. And therefore, there isn't the framework existing. So I would hope, though, um, the first vaccines, either for veterinary or human use, might be in the next two to three years.